What's going on, summoners? Welcome to another episode of Pro Guides' Best Champions to Main, now in patch 1217. The champions we pick for this series are strong picks with high performance but have low, low ban rates and are unlikely to be nerfed anytime soon. They're reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We also have a series that covers the most broken, contested picks in each roll, so be sure you're subbed to the channel so you don't miss out when we post those as well. We'll be jumping right into our list with Sejuani in the top lane. This once-off meta pick is now pretty much a staple in our videos. She has a really strong laning face with trading that allows her to deal nice little bursts of damage while her CC leaves foes with little chance to trade back. She does a surprising amount of damage for a tank and can very easily snowball if your foes slip up and give you an early kill. The build we have is the general best for just being an absolute wall in teamfights, but you can't swap out either Force of Nature or Thornmail for a Warmox if your team is playing the slow siege game. Another little changeup you can do is picking up Demonic Embrace as your second or third item for a lot more offensive power. Before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players, and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything they know with you. So, stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head on over to ProGuides.com for some professional help now. The second top laner on our list is Nico. A lot of the squishy range top lane carries are a sort of noob bait. The idea of bullying foes from a distance sounds good, but in reality those champions are so susceptible to ganks and are usually outscaled really fast, losing all ins to most meta top laners once they have their ults. But with Nico, you're able to bully most opponents at all stages of the game. Her W empowered auto attacks allow you to do well in both short and longer trades, while her E serves as both a strong offensive and defensive tool, depending on what you need for different situations. The AD build we have here is generally the best to go for bullying foes of all classes, but if your team is super AD heavy, you can also swap up and go for an AP build to suit your comp a little bit better. Today's final top laner is the Crab God himself, it's Urgot. He isn't as much of a lane bully as our last two picks though, in fact, he has kind of a weak early game. He's safe enough that he can farm in most lanes, which is great since you won't be looking for aggression in the first few levels anyways. But once you scale up, he becomes an incredibly powerful juggernaut, capable of ripping through any target that he gets onto, whether they're squishy or on the beefier side. Moving on to our junglers, the first pick we have is Skarner. While he isn't the most 1v9 machine in the game, you don't always need to play a champion that plays to solo carry to win games. Skarner is able to deliver super consistent results thanks to all the pick potential you have with Ghost, Turbo Chem Tank, and his ult. That said, we do recommend this Conqueror page to make you a bit more of a damage threat if you don't specifically need your face rush. The second jungler we have is Volibear. If you like to be able to apply a lot of pressure early on, but still be useful later in the game, he's probably someone you should invest some time into. And you won't need to invest quite that much, cause he's very easy. He also has good dueling and skirmishing early on, and post 6, you're able to literally shut off turrets, making dives so easy. Since you'll be building full tank, his damage does fall off a bit as the game goes on, but he still serves as plenty of a threat when you dive into the enemy backline. Our third jungler for today is Nunu. Despite their kits being nothing alike, he kind of fulfills the same niche as Volibear. His clear is pretty fast and healthy, his ganks are strong and extremely punishing, and he's a beefy, disruptive frontliner that has actually pretty good kill potential on enemy backline carries in later fights if they don't get peeled. The one area Nunu lacks in compared to Voli is his ability to duel enemy junglers but he easily makes up for that with his Q's ability to secure jungle last hits. Early on, that may mean the difference between getting or losing Scuttle, but later on, it really starts to shine when you can pretty much guarantee that every dragon and every baron goes your way as long as you know how to time your Q with Smite. Now for the mid lane, the first pick we have is Anivia. While she's generally considered more of a scaling carry, she by no means has a weak early game. I mean, her first few levels are pretty weak, but the second you hit 6, her ult lets you neutralize any lane and freely farm to your heart's content, or at least till you run out of mana. Our second mid laner is Velkos. He has a bit of a different learning curve than Anivia since some of his spells are harder to land, but putting in the time is definitely worth it. 
Once you have him down pat, the poke is nearly impossible for your enemies to dodge and you'll be bullying pretty much anyone out of the mid lane. But he's not just a strong laner, Velkos really shines in teamfights where a solid combo can easily annihilate the entire enemy team if you find a good angle. And it feels really rewarding to just laser down an entire 5 man team. The last mid laner we'll be looking at for today is Brand. His laning phase is super oppressive with his WE combo instantly clearing waves while constantly poking out your foe if they even get near the minions. Post 6, he also becomes a super strong skirmisher and team fighter, making him pair really well with a proactive jungle that looks to force objective fights or go for invades in the enemy jungle. Moving things down to the bottom lane, the first pick we have for today is Kog'Maw. A lot of people seem hesitant to lock in Kog in solo queue because they think of him as some weak early game carry that needs a team to hold his hand so he can safely scale up. But Kog's early game is not that weak. Really, with good wave management and playing around his W, he has some really strong trading patterns and can even be a lane bully. Our second bot lane carry is Vagar. Like Kog'Maw, he's another champion that people seem to have misconceptions about. On his own in the mid lane, Vagar may be a champion that just wants to AFK farm, but in the bottom lane, his cage makes setting up combos with supports really easy. This leads to some really effective trading patterns, and post 6, you may even be able to 100-0 to zero squishy targets if you're paired with a support that does decent damage, like a pike who can hook enemies into your cage. Our third pick is yet another hard scaling one. You've seen her before, your favorite pros play her. We keep making videos about her and will continue to do so until Riot nerfs her into the ground. It's none other than the queen of LP, it's Seraphine. And just like our previous picks, she's by no means an early game pushover. In fact, Seraphine has one of the strongest lane phases of any bot lane pick. She has hard hitting poke, very strong wave clear, and she combos super well with aggro champions thanks to her ability to layer crowd control. Out of lane, her damage does start to fall off a bit if you focus on stacking ability haste like we do with our build, but her insane amounts of utility easily make up for that as you enable your allies to hard carry fights. Now for our supports, the first pick we have is Sona. Out of all the supports in the game, she's probably the very best if you like to play to scale up and win the game via mid to late game team fights. Unlike our scaling bot lane carries, she actually does have a pretty weak early game to counterbalance her ridiculous scaling. Most lane faces, you'll be playing to just survive rather than to win trades. One really important bit of advice for Sona players is to actually put some thought into your power cords. I know it sounds like a lot of fun to just press buttons, but this will make a big difference. A lot of people just throw out whichever power cord they can, but you should really try to focus on abusing her W power cord. That damage reduction is a really OP tool for neutralizing enemy threats. Looking at our last four entries, it's pretty safe to say that the majority of the bot lane meta is still pretty heavily dominated by scaling picks. The only exceptions are champions that win via wave clear and poke, while traditional all-in champions are looking grim right now. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What are your thoughts on the current bot lane meta? Personally, I think there's too much healing, shielding, move speed and utility, and I just think things should die faster and also get rid of lifesteal by quite a bit. But that's my thoughts. We want to hear from you. So let us know your answers down in the comments below. The second support to consider maining is Leona. If you prefer playing engaged champions, well, she's pretty much the poster child for that. Statistically, Leona was doing pretty bad for a while, but after a bit of digging, we realized it wasn't Leona that was bad, it was the builds people were going on her. When you buy Even Shroud, it raises her win rate by a lot, and that was the case even before they gave it its recent buffs. Now, Even Shroud Leona is a straight up broken pick. Finishing off our list, we have Renata Glask. I don't really know why she's so underplayed these days, but my guess is that people think she's really difficult to play as she's a season 12 champion. Reality is, she's actually very easy. Her laning phase is strong, she synergizes well with a lot of the junglers and AD carries in the meta, and her team fighting is bonkers, with her ultimate being one of the best in the game for turning fights into easy sweeps when you find a good angle. And that is it for our top 3 champions to main on 1217. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know what you think about the current bot lane meta down in the comments below. 
And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until next time, good luck on the Rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.